between one, maybe two. And um, the, the poor man with sensitive ears is going to get a broom. <laughs> no, other than that, any other questions? Okay, at least 30 minutes plus three laps plus a sprint. Welcome back to another episode of the Fresh Crits of Bel Air. You're here with Steve. Sorry, no guests today, but stay tuned because in the next couple of eps, hopefully we will have someone on board. Um, today, we're down again at uh, a course you probably recognize by now. We're down at uh, with Hawthorne Cycling Club at the Teardrop Crit on a Wednesday night. Now, it was an interesting race, this one. Um, I dropped down for about seven minutes due to my hub not engaging don't really want to talk about it. It was a bit of a nightmare, but I was able to get back and uh, and contest the sprint at the end. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, the weather was pretty pretty shady, a little bit sketchy. We had um, forecasted some rain, um, and it was relatively dry throughout the race, but it had to get called a little short, purely just due to a couple of drops of rain hitting this corner here. So. Obviously, the the guys didn't want us riding in the wet, so I think it was a, a fair call to pull the race a little earlier. But all in all, we all stayed rubber side down, so make sure you stick around, watch the rest of the video, because I'm going to put together some highlights and uh, and where the race was won and lost. So if you like it, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. But let's uh, let's get stuck in. Alrighty, so we're going to pick this up only three laps in. We've only been racing for just under five minutes. And for those who watched last uh, week's action, you knew how much of a fan I was of Kerry's cornering skills. And that's no exception there. As you can see, he just glides around that corner. But one interesting thing in this race that I um, figured out is that um, I slightly adjusted my racing line around that corner. Uh, started a lot wider and cut in a lot harder and basically snipped off that apex line and, and I feel like that's probably the safest and fastest way around that corner so we'll have a look at a couple more attempts here so let me know what you think and if you know a better way to get around there pipe up in the comments below all right we're just going to go through a quick example of how I've changed my line on this corner so I start out wider uh, that definitely helps and by cutting in earlier it allows me to hit that dirt I guess perpendicular I think it is I'm not a scientist which then allows me to get on the power early because my bike is not as leaned over and allows me to keep contact with the group in front so I think those three tips definitely helped my cornering skills so be interesting to hear what you guys think so make sure you pipe up in the comments below and let me hear your thoughts Okay, so we just come around the bottom corner for the seventh time in this race and I wanted just to highlight how important it is to follow the correct wheels when there's surges and when there's things going on in the race. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reverse the camera so the big one is the back camera and you can see here pretty clearly once there is a bit of a surge, a big gap opens up. Now, if you're in the unlucky space where you are the one caught on the front, that means you're going to have to burn matches to close that gap. And if you don't want to do it and the rest of the group behind you are not committed to closing the gap, this is exactly how a breakaway can form and, and that can be race over. So it's just important to note that you always got to have your head on a swivel looking to make sure that uh, you're following the right wheels. And if you see something surging off the front, snap onto it because you don't know if that could be the race winning move. However, fortunately for Alan, he has uh, Tate to help him tow him back to the group and uh, is able to stitch everything back up and, and resume as per normal. All right, so now that everyone has been joined back together, um, I guess it's time for a classic uh, Matt breakaway. So he looks like he's soft pedaling in the saddle there. Um, but it doesn't take long for him to start just to float away and, and get a gap and, and he does it with absolute ease. He's not out of the saddle. He's just done this seated acceleration. The rest of the group kind of look around and they're like, well, who's going to shut that one down? I'm not too keen. I've been sitting on the front. Um, so we kind of hold off and just wait for a distance and then this guy on the orange bike launches in a bit of attack. But because he's already at the front, it's very easy to sit onto his wheel and catch a draft. So all it basically does is the group or the peloton surges um, and strings everybody out, which it does here. But fortunately for Matt, he's able to stay away. So we'll pick it up where it gets a little bit more interesting. 
So this cycle house rider has been sitting on the front for a fair while as we come through this bottom corner once again. Um, and look, the pace hasn't been too high, fair enough, because he's been on the front for a while. So this green rider decides he this is a great time to see if he can bridge across to the front. He has a little bit of a chat to the cycle house rider and looks behind, sees no one's too keen on chasing and decides to put in a bit of an extended effort over the top of the hill to see if he can bridge across, bridge across to the two or three riders that are out in front, Matt being one of them. So the cycle house rider wants people to come through. I'm not interested. I wave through Kerry to see if he wants to have a bit of a turn. Um, I'm not too keen to, to rip to the front because I know eventually we're going to catch these guys anyway, so I just want to conserve. As we round this top corner, you can see the pace. Yeah, look, it's relatively high, um, but there isn't much action happening. And when it's just been tempo-ish riding for a while, everyone gets a little bit toey. And uh, and attacks decide to start springing up out of nowhere, which is exactly what Kerry does here. He swings out to the right um, as, as third wheel. Orange bike jumps in behind him, as well as a few other riders. So for me, this is fine. I look behind and see that everyone wants to join in. The cycle house rider is not going to let this this wheel go. So he surges a bit of an effort as we round this bottom corner. It's just constant toing and froing. Um, throughout the race and and you know you really if you you want to be in the top um, top three coming through this bottom corner in the last lap it's all about conserving that energy and getting other people to do the work now that might often be frowned upon in the peloton but it's what you got to do to save energy so we come up to the top of the hill again the group slowly gets stitched back up So we've crested the top of the hill and you can see in the distance there, the group has been has splintered off. Um, Kerry's looking fairly fatigued there and that's would right now would be a perfect time to attack him if we were, for example, even on points or whatever. Um, but in crit you're not. Um, and now it's the, the group's all about, uh, it's been splintered, there's people everywhere, there's gaps showing up and this could be a pretty dangerous time. Maybe not so much at Hawthorne, but in other crits, especially fast ones like Sandown or Footscray um, or Glenvale. Th these are the sorts of uh, times where you should be nervous as a rider and, and looking um, to constantly be moving up in the group to avoid, you know, getting left behind and missing out on a, um, on a match-winning attack. So here we have another example of Kerry's cornering. So he swings out wide, cuts in really, really tight, goes perpendicular over the dirt, and look how he's already put one or two bike lengths into me there. I'm having to sprint and surge up to the top. So is Alan, who's on my wheel. So that's, you know, your classic example of by being able to take that corner right, um, where you can, you know, gain that one or two extra bike lengths, which um, avoid you having to do those big surges out of the corners. So rounding the top corner, um, this is where my free hub fails. So you can see the I'm spinning my pedals at 63 revs, um, but no power is being put down. Um, basically, the free hub is spinning inside the body, I guess. So I'm coasting. I put my hand up just so to avoid that I've had a mechanical and basically just limp back to the line. Um, where I have to pull the front wheel off and pull the hubs out and it was an absolute nightmare but we'll skip through that uh, and we'll pick it up um, just around three laps left. So I finally got the hub fixed, rolled back to the start line where we spoke to the race guys and they said, look, we're, it's a bit of rain, there's three laps left. So Paulie launches an attack off the front. He's, he's not really much of a sprinter. The only way he's going to be able to win this bike race is by breaking away three laps to go and, and hoping uh, he's going to stay the way. As you can see, the rest of the, the peloton roll on by there. 
Um, I'm obviously feeling a little bit guilty that I missed out on a couple of laps. So I just slot in behind the, the rest of the group and um, don't really want to... I feel pretty bad because I've sat out. So um, we roll down the back straight here and obviously everyone's going to be pretty nervous and pretty tense. Um, but, you know, it's all about the positioning now. So right now, three laps left, you really want to be wanting to think about starting to move up to the front of the race because uh, you don't want to be caught at the back if there's a crash or you get put out of position or anything like that. Being closer to the front, yes, you have to eat some more wind, but often it's probably the safest spot to be. So rounding this bottom corner, absolute last. Um, and obviously because I've been sitting out for a while, the heart rate is quite low. So this is my time, I, I think, um, where I'm going to make a bit of a move to get up to the front of the race. So I do a bit, uh, I burn a match here and, um, and drop some watch and surge over on the right hand side to move myself up to the front of the race as we come into two laps left. The fighting for positions are on. As you can see, Pat, who I've just highlighted there, ends up coming first in this race. And you can see in my rear cam now, Kerry, he comes third in this. So, you know, it just once again shows you that um, in order to be contesting the sprint at the end of the race, you really need to be moving it up to the front of the group, um, at least at the third lap, if not the second lap, and at very latest, the last. Um, obviously, that's leaving it with um, a lot to do in the final lap. So, another attack goes. This is obviously not going to... Um, it's obviously going to be brought back. No one's uh, going to let any sort of wheels go this early. Right now, I'm not too sure why I haven't slotted in behind um, this rider here, but you know now I have to eat a whole bunch of wind, but it looks like it's been pretty well guarded by this uh, rider here in the Orange Giant. Um, we're coming into the bottom corner once again. We're going to be pretty wide. We don't want to be having touching any wheels. We come around the corner here, and you can see Pat um, just in front of me now, surging up the hill as we hit 850 watts again as we come into the final lap. A little gap has opened up behind us, but, you know, I think that's going to be shut down as we crest the hill. Pat continues to surge off the front as we're about to cross the line for the final lap. There's the bell, and now we're on. So we've got Pat just in front of me and as you can see in the distance there there is one rider still in front I believe that's Paul as we come around this corner we're going to be a couple wide you can see Pat absolutely railing his bike in looking a little bit twitchy there but you would expect when you're hitting you know 50 plus k's an hour coming into the fast part of the course uh, as we just quickly uh, ascend this last tiny little climb on the back straight into the downhill bit this is where positioning is so so important so you're really wanting if you can burn a match to get to the front of the bike race now there's only about seven or eight riders left in this final group as we come into the bottom corner here i'm going to slow it down to play it out for you First up, Kerry enters about second with Pat in third. But watch this blue rider on the right-hand side as he's right behind the cycle house rider. He gets pinched up against the gutter, wanting the cycle house rider to do the work. He should have bailed out left, but he gets pinched. Now, his bike race is over. As you see there, I've just highlighted Kerry and Pat. They are first and second coming into this final corner. Pat decides to take the inside line here, and Perry uh, can't stay on his wheel. I go over the top of Kerry because he's absolutely cooked. Pat is way, way too strong and takes out first. I'm second. Kerry easily third over my main man, Anders, who picks up fourth. Um, and that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. What a race. A lot of drama. Um, mechanicals that had everything. But I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, if you did, please hit the like button. Um, if you want to pipe up and say something in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. So make sure you get involved in that. If you do like the videos, um, I'm going to continue doing them. But I do love it when people do subscribe to the channel. It fills my heart with joy. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you all lovely humans in the next race. But uh, that is a wrap. Have a fantastic week. And ciao.